Okay, <clears throat> here we're going to work on um, from this edition. It was uh, the 15th edition of the textbook. It was a uh, problem 5-9. And it gives us a good kind of overview of the various transactions that um, impact the capital projects fund um, and has some financing and stuff like that in here. So it's a good, good one to go through. Um, so uh, here we have in, during fiscal 2011, the town of Dex um, approved a construction, constructing and equipping a rec center to be supported by tax supported bonds of 3 million, okay? And here's the following transactions in 2011 that occurred and we're supposed to make entries in both the governmental activities and the, um, and the uh, capital project. Um, capital project fund uh, in the same, uh, in this module, sorry. So um, let's start with the first one, okay? So so this is one of those dual entry, another one like the project for or module four and module three, actually module three was uh, only budget. So budgetary entries are only for governmental funds, not the government activities funds, governmental activities fund. Um, remember, which is that second place that you're gonna make entries that will, that kind of reflects a more business-like look at a government kind of an overall view, okay? And, and it'll become, uh, we'll reiterate that in a moment. Oh, the first one, preliminary but planning and engineering expenses in the amount of 60,000 were incurred um, and there wasn't any money yet to, to pay this, um, which is why in this case, they're using vouchers payable. I know it seems weird when you see vouchers payable and you're gonna see uh, contracts payable down below. Um, contracts payable in this book and this um, module here just reflects the fact that there's already a contract in place to pay these contractors for their work, as opposed to this, which is just expenses that have been incurred outside of the normal contracting process and the normal bid process and all this kind of stuff. Um, so um, the, the entry here is easy for the um, governmental, I mean, for the uh, capital projects fund and for the government, uh, government, the governmental activities or government wide fund here, we have um, uh, we have different accounts, okay? And you're going to see this over and over again. This is going to be vouchers payable again for government wide activities. But remember, um, this is whenever you're talking about the government wide side. Remember, you're talking about um, construction work in progress which is going to be oh, is going to be a an account that is an it's a fixed asset account a long-term asset account okay and then when you're done with the project as you'll see later um, you're going to reclassify everything that's in this work in progress account and reclassify it as a regular fixed asset a regular building just like you do in in for-profit accounting kind of when you're ready to start depreciating it when it's been placed in service and it's a big project like this that might span over multiple years well that's certainly how we use our construction work in progress account here at the Educational Foundation where I, where, um, I work. And we have lots of projects on all, lots of our real estate that'll cross over fiscal year. So we use a work in progress account because we're a lot of times not ready to start appreciating something, placing it in service, okay? Um, number two, a contract was let under competitive bids for a major segment of the construction project in the amount of 2.5 million. Okay, whenever you see that an order was placed or a purchase order or a contract was signed, that is your cue um, that you're talking about recording an encumbrance, okay? Like a placeholder in the budget. And so, um, You've got encumbrance, and so when you're talking about recording an encumbrance, you're talking about debiting it, okay? Um, and so um, let's come up here and let's get the, our encumbrance account here and paste it. And let's, and then our encumbrance is outstanding account. That's kind of our, kind of our budgetary control account that kind of almost like a budgetary, um, budgetary fund balance type um, account that kind of helps reserve part of your fund or part of your fund balance for something that you know is coming, like a soft liability almost, right? So we've signed, we bid out the project 
and here we have 2.5 million worth of encumbrances, like worth of a placeholder for our capital projects fund. Okay, that's number two. Number three, an invoice for 1.6 million was received from a contractor um, uh, and a portion of the work that, for a portion of the work that had been completed under the general contract, which means under this $2.5 million contract that was bid out and signed, okay? So the first thing that you wanna do, and let me see if I can just copy and paste these above it, because this entry is gonna have multiple lines, because we have to do something first. Not only do we have to record the real transaction, but we need to uh, re reverse some of that encumbrance that we just recorded, okay? So we're gonna go in here and let's see here. Da, 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 da. We're gonna go in here and we're going to reverse some of this encumbrance that we already recorded. Because we signed the contract, now we spent 1.6 million out of it. So let's come down here and let's take 1.6 million out of um, the encumbrances account and let's let's um, put it back into the reserve for encumbrances or debited, okay? So we're gonna reduce that kind of placeholder um, for both of those accounts, all right? And so the other two accounts are kind of matching accounts, uh, the matching transaction that again is a kind of a non-budgetary transaction for the capital projects fund is, um, construction expenditures, we're spending money on the project, or an expenditure can be recognized now is the better way to say it, okay? Because we actually haven't paid these bills, but we're, we're about to, okay? So that means we can officially make it part of the construction expenditures account. And um, here, again, because it's underneath a, an actual contract, instead of vouchers payable, we use contracts payable, okay, to record the other side of the transaction. Um, let's see. Oh, 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 let's, what did I do there? Sorry. Um, contracts payable. No. And you see this uh, contracts payable. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we'll cover that in, in just a minute, actually. So I was going to tell you about the retained percentage. One, two, one, two, three. All right. So we have full contracts payable of 1.6 million. That's how much we're owed. Okay. Um, on the on on that transaction for number th uh, number three. Um, we also, though, need to come down here and let's do this again. We need to make the government wide entry. Okay, because this is a this is a transaction that impacts the government wide journal. Okay, the governmental activities journal. It's not budgetary. It's a it's a it's an actual transaction. Except here, you're going to notice the difference. This you're going to see this several times in this module. That is, the con the vouchers payable part of the transaction is going to look the same in both journals. You both owe one point six million. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. 1.6 and 1.6, see there? Um, th those two parts are the same. It's this part, construction expenditures for, for the recreation center. These are not construction expenditures in the government-wide journal. It is, again, the construction work in progress, okay? And we've already got that account there uh, from copying and pasting it down, okay? so. Again, governmental activities, government-wide journal, you're turning things into assets when you're building something. You're, you're turning them into long-lived assets. Since the, since the Capital Projects Fund has a, has a current resources focus um, and uses the modified version of a, a, a modified accrual a method of accounting, then you are recording these as expenditures because they're just this purpose of this fund being set up is just to account for the construction of this rec center. When it's done, it'll go away. Okay. Um, so that's why they're treated as expenditures or outflows of that fund. Okay. So you see the difference in the treatment there. Here we're debiting construction work in progress. In the capital projects fund, we're debiting construction expenditures. Okay. So it looks like in number four, we got our bond issue. The bond issue was sold at par plus accrued interest of 25,000, um, okay? And it gives us a little hint here that there's gonna be an additional difference 
in the two governmental activities and the capital projects fund entries in that um, in that this accrued interest is going to be treated differently. Okay, so let's take a look. It's easy on it's somewhat um, easy on the um, the capital projects fund side. Okay, so we're going to go here and here, and let's put in um, let's put in some more here, some more room for us. All right, so capital project side, it's actually easy. Other financing sources, let's see if we have other financing sources, proceeds of bonds, that's where, that's where our credit's gonna be because we're actually getting cash, okay? So let's let's do it correctly here, Jody, and, and only, and do our debits first and our, our um, credit second, okay? So we have uh, other financing sources and we have here um, the cash, okay? So we got in, Three million, two, three, one, two, three. All right. So the the and you know, the reason that you're not including the accrued uh, interest on this that it mentions of twenty five thousand is because that's considered part of the um, the debt service fund that's going to also be created to service this debt um, that we'll cover in in module six. The debt service fund is going to have um, inflows into it that are considered monies that are available to pay debt service. And this is kind of considered one of those inflows. It's kind of part of the financing transaction. You really don't want it coming over or, or it's not considered appropriate to bring that over and, and mix it with other kind of general construction expenditures, okay? Um, in the governmental activities though, uh, because this is, you know, again, more like you would might record it with a for-profit um, uh, entity or a FASB entity, um, you are going to account for uh, uh, the part of that um, part of the um, or that accrued interest. You're going to account for that also as part of this this transaction. Okay, you're not going to leave it out like you did in capital projects. So we got here cash and then um, bonds payable, and then you have accrued interest payable. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is all government wide. Okay. Not part of the capital project fund. And you'll see up here that hopefully my, um, hopefully everything is working uh, correctly. As I see here, it's not because I'm copying and pasting a lot of values, but all this up here is just the capital projects fund. It's like a trial balance that I have going. Um, that's kind of looking down at this table. And again, I've explained this on other of these narrated problems, looking down at that table, looking for the appropriate account and adding it up because we're going to need to kind of refresh, go take a look at our trial balance here and there to make sure that we're appropriately kind of, you know, paying off all the transactions. Um, when a problem says all tax receipts were received for the year, that's the kind of situation where we got to go back and make sure we're looking at our trial balance. Um, to make sure that we're getting the prog pro uh, the, the problem correct and we're, we're following closely to the directions, okay? So here we go, cash. We received 3025, remember, because we received the premium. So we're, we're reflecting that full 3025 there, the 3 million in bonds payable here, and the 25,000 of accrued interest payable there. And again, what is it up with my formulas here? Um, there we go. Okay. Again, copying and pasting is sometimes a very dangerous thing if you're not keeping up with which columns you have that are formulas and which ones are not. Okay. Um, maybe I should do that here. But um, anyway, uh, moving on to number five, uh, the contractor's bill plus uh, less a 4% retention was vouchered for payment. Um, the contractor's bill. So I think it's talking about this 1.6 million up here, okay? So here's this kind of baby step that I want you to take in between vouchers payable, because vouchers payable in this case in, in governmental accounting and throughout this textbook means ready to pay with cash, okay? Um, anything short of that in a lot of these chapters is going to, it's, it's a, it's a, um, uh, anything short of that, any of these chapters is going to be one of those other accounts like contracts payable, or in this case, 
contracts payable retained percentage. Okay, so let's see. Do I have something out? No. Uh, let's see. Uh, insert. So let's do. Um, this will be a three line entry for the um, for the uh, for this uh, for this problem. So let's take it here. Um, the first thing we're doing is we're taking the whole thing out of contracts payable up here because we're going to basically be moving it to a new payable account for this problem. Okay, so we got capital projects fund. We're going to take this whole 1.6 out. Then we are moving it to vouchers payable mostly, but as you'll see in this problem and others, there is a um, there is a uh, a retained percentage that's present in a lot of contracts where it'll say, all right, we're going to hold back 4% just to make sure we don't have any problems at the end of the project. And then we'll, once everything's finalized and everything's released, uh, everything signed off on, we'll release this last percentage. Um, it's, it's very common in contracts, uh, in large, you know, construction contracts, things like this. So uh, you'll see this in several of these problems. So they're holding back 4%. 0.04 times that is 64,000. Okay. And let's freeze that so it doesn't try to turn it into any kind of formula. Uh, so we have a vouchers payable of uh, a retained percentage, is what it's called, actually. Let's see. Contract payable retained percentage. And then the difference in those two numbers is going to be what we're, plug what we're uh, plugging to vouchers payable. Okay, um, vouchers payable, the, the amount that's sitting there waiting to be paid with cash. To go with our vouchers payable, we recorded initially up here, remember, 60,000? Um, so the net, of, the net of those two numbers is 1536123. Okay, 1.5 million and change, all right? Um, so that's, that's what our um, credit to vouchers payable is there. All right, so it's saying that, all right, now number six, all the vouchers payable that was outstanding there was paid, except for 1,300 because they had some disagreement with the, um, with the uh, uh, vendor, obviously, with the contractor, all right? So this is saying all of vouchers payable plus uh, minus 1,300 was paid. So let's do this. Oh, this is something that makes it useful for you to do or kind of shows the usefulness of you doing your um, journal entries in a kind of a table like this. First, let's filter it to where we're only looking at capital projects, all right? And now let's filter it to where we're only looking at vouchers payable. Uh, fill up, let's do this. Right click, filter by selected sales value. I, I love that. All right, so we have the total, um, total of those two is 1.596, but it's saying that they are, and let's do this, let's do a total right over here where it'll automatically give me total debits and credits that are visible, okay? So some, some, except let's say here, they're saying here that we're doing everything but 1,300, okay? So we got one point, uh, one, uh, one million five, uh, $1,594,700. Okay. So, uh, let's, this is going to be, as soon as I unfilter this table, this, this total is going to change. And so is this formula. So let's copy and paste this value up here. So we'll have it handy whenever we need to do the entry. Okay. So let's clear the filters and let's clear this filter that had it on vouchers payable. And so we know now that this is going to be um, this is our uh, this is oh, this is going to be our entry for vouchers payable here uh, when we are kind of paying everything off quote everything off right we're we're holding off so vouchers payable we're going to what do you do when you pay off a pay off a liability you are debiting it um, oh Let's see oh sorry 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 I'm just all over. All right, whenever you're paying off a liability, you're debiting it. And our number again from above is, let's just bring it down. So I'm, I'm all about copying and pasting. Anything that removes the, the ability of me to type the number in wrong is, is what I'm about. All right, so cash here, 
is going to be what we're using to pay the liability, of course. Uh, so there's our amount less, um, less the uh, less the thirteen hundred. Okay. Now, in our uh, this is saying now the fiscal year in closing entries were prepared. We're not done with this project, okay? Because we have. Um, we have, um, we still obviously have half of our money remaining to, to spend here on this project. And so, um, so here we go. There, will, there would normally be some government wide entries, but since we weren't given any, in, uh, any like depreciation dates or, well, in this case, not depreciation, but any kind of other, other information, we really don't have enough to have any kind of temporary account balances like an expenditure. They're all assets, right? So there's really not any closing um, in the in the government-wide journal for, for this for these transactions. They're kind of part of a bigger pot, part of a bigger thing of transactions. But related to this, there really aren't any assets yet. The, the, the building's not in service, so you're not depreciating. So in this example, there are no closing entries for the government-wide uh, journal, the governmental activities journal. But there are several for this. As you remember, we've been using the word expenditures throughout this module, right? Construction expenditures, construction expenditures. So um, so this is, this is, so we are gonna have some, uh, some uh, year-end entries here that we're gonna have to record to close out some of these balances, all right? Or some of these temporary accounts or revenue and expenditure accounts or other financing sources, which is where we're going to start here. Okay, remember up here we had um, the three million dollars. Well, where did we put it here? Oh, da, 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 da. Did I record this? Um, oh, it already said that we had received the uh, other financing sources of. Um, yeah. It had said earlier, oh, in um, uh, entry number four, sorry, is where we received the $3 million, other financing source. So there's one of the accounts we're going to have to close. That is a revenue account in the governmental activity and governmental accounting world. And that was $3 million. So we're going to debit it for $3 million. Uh, let's see. And what am I doing here? We can just go up here to our trial balance. Um, we have construction expenditures of 1. Um, 1. 1.6 million, 1.66 million. Uh, so let's bring this, uh, let's actually bring both of these down because we're going to credit when we're closing an expense for our expenditure, we are crediting the amount. Oh yeah. And let's, um, Let's put the word yes in. This is our closing entry column, and this will treat these as just like in your Smithfield, your Corvallis workbook. This will treat these as closing entries, and you should start to see a difference in these two columns. See pre closing and post closing. See how we're gradually knocking out these accounts here. Um, so, uh, encumbrances is another account. Uh, you don't have to close encumbrances. Um, as we mentioned in the in the you know the other uh, the other module, because you're really just going to reopen them on day one of the next fiscal year, um, so that it really isn't required. But since it matches the book, we'll do that here. Um, this is going to be another uh, credit because encumbrances has a, a debit balance. Um, it's kind of a budgetary account here, so let's close that. And um, the difference in all of these, and again, this kind of um, helps hold some of our um, some of our um, money to the side here. This uh, encumbrances account is the net of all these is going to be our fund balance. Um, and let's see. Well, let's go ahead and get the correct name up here. Fund balance restricted. Oh, mm, mm, mm. All right, and that is 440,000. That's our net. And you can see that number over here was giving you kind of the plug to make that entry um, balanced in, in um, completion. 
uh, balanced completely. Um, so uh, that is how this is um, how this is done. And again, on the new fiscal year, you're basically going to have an entry that um, that you know puts those encumbrances. But well, you still got your encumbrances outstanding, which is a budgetary account. So it's kind of still sitting over there with a a nine hundred thousand a credit to it as one of your budgetary accounts. Where did I, uh, and I'm sorry that I'm having, did I filter this or, yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, it's a 2.5 less than 1.6. So you're still left, you should be still left with this encumbrances outstanding account here, which is kind of a set aside for your, um, for the remainder, remaining estimated expenses of your project that you've already signed a contract for, okay? So hopefully all of this helps and sorry for the, uh, the winding on on some of these problems, but um, it's some of this, as you have noticed, is difficult to explain. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and please let me know if you have any questions.